Dudes to Dads, brought to you by Dad University, is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads, episode 187. Yeah. Alan, how are you tonight? Great. Really? You I look am good. You look good. I'm, I'm a little spry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had some water. I feel a little better. Cold water. Cold water. And you know, it's funny. I've been re- trying to replace my caffeine intake with just drinking some water. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Health or something? I actually had some caffeine earlier. Did you? So, yeah. Are you all jazzed up? I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> um, but so if I start uh, repeating myself, okay. uh, it's just because I'm very energetic. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've got a topic that is just, I think it just had to be covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know of another way to explain it. It's boys will be boys Mm -hmm. is BS. (laughs) That's what it's. uh, That's the gist. And there's a lot of reasons that this topic came on. Um, But and we'll go over it. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. We'll go over it. I'll let it let it happen. Um, You may have heard the term Mm -hmm. uh, boys will be boys. And when someone says this, what do you typically think of when somebody just says, ah, boys will be boys. The kids in trouble. Or, you know what I mean? I always feel like they're, they're being, they're being a jerk or something. Okay. And it's like, boys will be boys, but I, no, that's fine. Yeah. It, it, that can expand to a lot of areas, but sure. I feel like mostly using the, like the Dennis the menace type of thing, you know? Okay. I always think of it that way. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. Well, Bart, Bart Simpson. Yeah, no. And, and that's, that, that's definitely, um, it, it is often explaining, uh, mischievous or childish behavior. Yeah. You know, if it's typical of, you know, young boys or young men and that it's also not a surprise, when it happens. Right. That's the other part. You yeah. know, it's like, ah, boys will be boys. And it's like, well, of course, that's the that's whole reason. Like, that's what they do. That's why. Testosterone does that. Yeah. And so today I want to talk about why that phrase is not good. And I, I, I mean, I say total BS. I can't, I don't, you know, I think we still want to be, uh, have a, our G rating. G rating yeah. So I won't say any words. Um, but I think there's a lot of areas where the term boys to be, boys will be boys can be applied. So a couple of examples, like you even said, you know, maybe it's like two boys, you know, g- going at it or wrestling or fighting or something like that. Um, maybe a boy having like a messy room or like even really bad hygiene or something like that. And like, ah, all three of those things were me. As a kid. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, boys will be boys, you know, or maybe even like a teenage boy, um, you know, playing pranks. Yeah. On like unsuspecting people. It's just, it's often about recklessness or rowdiness, you sure. know? And like you said, Dennis, the menace and that kind of Bart stuff. Simpson. Yeah. Um, but when people say it, it, they're attempting to justify the reason why the boys or young men are acting in these ways. Like as if it's okay because they are boys. Well, of course this is how they're acting. Mm-hmm. And, what I want to do is I want to focus on specifically male behavior towards women. And so there's been you know a lot of stuff in the news, people getting in trouble, um, right. all kinds of stuff going on, political things happening. And that's why I want to focus on the male behavior towards women and people using that phrase. It's like, you know what? Nah, nah, the boys will be boys. Like, that's just how it is. And what I'm here to say is that as a man and as a father, you have to teach your son how to treat other people in a positive way. Sure. If you don't understand this yourself, you have to do some work Mm -hmm. on how important this is and how crucial it is. So I want to take a look at a couple of different scenarios and, you know, and sort of how, what typically can happen and the effect that they have. So here's, here's the first one. You're driving in your car with your 10 year old son and you're at, you're at a stoplight and three young women walk across the street and you see that your son is sort of staring at them with interest. You know, he's kind of looking over at them. And so then you make a comment about how they look. In any way, it could be positive, negative, doesn't matter. You make a comment. It could be giggity, giggity. Yeah, <laughs> oh, something. Yeah. yeah. And so you make a comment about it. 
Um, so you can think that you didn't say anything inappropriate because maybe your comment even just said, hey, look at those hot women or whatever. And it's <laughs> not and that's not inappropriate. Sure. But you just taught your son when you said that, that it is acceptable and OK to judge the girl's appearance in that way. OK. As far as commenting and sure. saying that. So here's what I can say is that it's it's acceptable in a sense because we all do it to think about it. Like that's just the way that it is. Yeah. But it's another thing to say it. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing to say it in front of your child. Right. The idea, because you, you, even if you don't think it's inappropriate, it is because you're judging the person in, in any way. And that in itself is not okay to do that. Yeah. You know, when you're judging a person in a sense, let's say as a potential mate and you're like, well, are they attractive? Are they not attractive? It's in the same way. It's not okay to say that to somebody else. Right. It's okay if you want to think it or you have your own opinion, but it's really not okay. Um, I'm not saying we all don't do it. I'm not saying like, Hey, you know what? This has never been done before. And you know, we're all not guilty of this or guilty. I'm just saying, right. It's really not okay. So here's another scenario. Your teenage son is hanging out upstairs in his room. It's a weekend night and you go up to his room and you're just like, Hey, why, why are you hanging out here? Why don't you go out and get yourself some <laughs> and no joke. I've, not my parents. I, I talked to somebody because I was talking to them about this episode. Yeah. And they told me that they said that their parent actually said that. Oh my gosh. So this hilarious. is not, that's not even a made up story. Oh, no, exactly. It's, it's real. From real life. That's hilarious. And cause I was like, Oh, I need an example. They're like, well, I can tell you one. <laughs> um, that's fun. So that totally objectifies women as if there's something to conquer for yourself. And it's not even like, go get a woman. It's like, get some, get some. Exactly. <laughs> like plural. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the reality. Teenage boys are going to have some raging hormones. Oh, for sure. You know, and you can't stop that necessarily. But, but you could talk, especially if your child is or your son is, is shy. Maybe you, you know, discuss with them how to strike up a conversation, you know, or how to, you know, how to talk to somebody or how to ask them out on a date or, you know, something that's a little bit more positive yeah. or a little I, bit more helpful. My dad, um, bless his heart. He, <laughs> he, he. <laughs> Uh, at least instilled in me <laughs> said, you know, manners will get you everywhere. Right. You got to have man. You got to be polite. You got to open the door, like all that stuff. And I was also raised primarily by females as well. Totally. So I was like, I had a very matriarchal family on my mother's side. So I didn't mess with girls and women. I didn't treat them bad. Right. Because a, I was, you know, my dad also reinforced this, but, yep. but because of my mother's side yep. was so matriarchal with mostly aunts and one uncle. Mm-hmm. And then my grandma, you know, my, right. my grandpa and my mom um, and, and my grandpa was like, OK, whatever. Um, th- th- I had to be respectful. Yeah. You know, you learn that very early on. And no, it really cool. helps to, to have that. So I, I totally agree. It's <laughs> yeah. funny. To, I hear these stories. Yeah. I mean, these examples, um, you know, you really have to then think about what you are saying to your son <laughs> and how the, or, you know, what kind of impact it can have on their perception and ultimately the treatment of women. Yeah. You know, you, you think about these kinds of things and saying these things over and over and over and commenting and like as a dad, like you're trying to want to be buddy buddy with your son or like relate to him or whatever. And the truth is, it's not doing them a service. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's really doing them a disservice. Um. You know, the other thing is you're going to experience situations in which your son will say or do something that's not okay. Sure. It can happen. And it's important for you to point out what they did or what they said and how it's not okay Mm -hmm. and discuss with them how they could handle it better in the future. Um, Because you letting something go is saying that it's acceptable. 
Right. And so you, you, you don't let it go. If you hear them cat calling, if you hear them talking negatively about somebody, if you hear them, you know, making fun of somebody or even on the other side, you know, talking so crazy about some girl and how yeah, he blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. References. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. You have it's it's up to you to correct that. Yeah. You know, and, and we as fathers need to do that with our sons. Um, I think even before you know, any sex talk and, and even when they're young that you should be having these ongoing dialogues about like, what is appropriate behavior? And like you said, you, you were taught and your dad explained like that, you know, manners will get you everywhere and here's what you need to do. And you open the door like, you know, and doing those kinds of things and how to communicate with people. So that's why I said about like, Hey, how maybe should I, you know, approach somebody and talk to them, yeah. you know, or be, you know, or do something. Um, and even talking to them about sexual harassment, mm-hmm. you know, what it, it, you might think the line is different. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It's somebody else's comfort level and they might be comf- their comfort level might be way different than yours. Right. And you have to learn to respect that. Sure. You know, and so that's the, having those ongoing, you know, conversations, even at an early age is really important. So that yeah. they understand that, that you just don't do those things. You <laughs> right. know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I can't even imagine the whole thing that's going on right now with texting and sexting and all that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, right. And yeah. what's appropriate. And that guys think that that's yeah. a good idea. Well, yeah, and they can be almost anonymous with it nowadays. So it's just this really ridiculous amount of things that are going on there. People. Yeah, I, my kids are going to be in a bubble. <laughs> that's what my wife and I always say. Like, please don't pop your bubble. Yeah, yeah, just, seriously. It's so, just stay it's so dangerous out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think there's going to be large variances in what people feel is appropriate. You know, what I feel is appropriate might be different. Yeah. Um, but we have to start our sons off at a young age just to reduce so much of the negative impact that comes from these kinds of situations. Right. You know, harassment in the workplace, um, you know, people, the way that they treat other people. Yeah. Um, just all kinds of issues happening. Um, you know, and we're not even getting into the fact that, like, you know, people are accused of things that aren't you know, or, you know, um, misle- yeah. you know, not accused sure, or, or sure. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. And there's, right and there's so much of that going on as we speak currently. Yeah. Yeah. With, with celebrities and senators and all Lord kinds of who stuff. else. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's, it's a strange climate to be in. It's, yeah. it's so strange. All this stuff is resurfacing, but it's like, I guess that's the, th- that's the point is yeah. bringing light to things that were overlooked before because boys would be boys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So stop saying the phrase. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but we'd love to hear from you, Alan. What should they do if they have any comments or feedback or questions? They should email us podcast at dudes dot com, or you can hit us up on social media, Twitter at dudes to dads, Facebook dudes to dads com, and please hit up YouTube and watch all the wonderful videos at Dad University. A lot of dudes to dads and Dad University stuff is there. And if nothing else, if you don't do any of those things, what you need to do is go to iTunes and or Stitcher and or wherever you get your podcasting and you see our show and leave. A review subscribe to those networks leave a comment even if you don't like us send it to your friends who's not gonna like uh, well us? Is, it could be possible you're everyone loves you okay well that's true i get all this feedback the, the one person who's the guy with the really good voice <laughs> the one person who doesn't like who's him. not you <laughs> jason <laughs> please subscribe and leave comments it really helps perpetuate the show awesome well alan thank you as always thank you and boys will be boys we'll see you next time <laughs> see you next time